check. <clears throat> yeah. Good evening. Howdy, howdy, everybody. Hello, Ultra. Yeah, yeah. What's up? Is that a big sushi Joe there? Welcome, 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 everybody. I'm not gonna play any music or anything. So if you want to play music, on, I'm gonna. I mean, I'm gonna play music for myself. Can anybody hear me? All right. Then that's not me. <laughs> I don't plan on... I mean, I'm not going to play music for everybody else, but I'm going to play music for myself. Um, just to let you know, if you want to listen to your own music, knock yourself out. At least the music shouldn't be coming through. So if you hear music, let me know. We'll give it a few minutes for people to come in. Welcome to the Sunday Night Market Scan. I am a Joe named Joe. You may also call me Joe. It is my given name. It's my government name. Uh, hmm. This is the uh, lecture where we go over, where, where I go over, uh, the bigger stocks in the market, kind of get an idea of where we might be going this week. We also have uh, a news week coming. We've got CPI and PPI this week, which could impact the markets i mean could it will <laughs> it usually always does uh so it's going to create a lot of volatility when we got when there's when there's news headlines like that um the markets tend to react a little bit more wildly so uh technicals are going to be i mean technicals are always a 50 50 shot in my mind um, but when it's a large, a big, a big news week like that, I'd be a little bit more skeptical. Uh, we'll also take a look at banks. I think banks, I mean, I've been saying it for a while. I think banks are due for a pullback, but they just, they just keep going up. I don't, uh, I actually don't see them stopping anytime soon, but there has been some, uh, options flow in some of the larger banks, which has made me question, um, just how much gas is left in the tank on this push for banks. So if you don't know, my name is Joe. I trade primarily futures and options. Uh, I like to long, I like to long options, especially on earnings. <laughs> and I really, really what I'm looking for a lot is low cost, high reward contracts and, uh, trades because I, I don't like losing a lot of money and if I only lose five dollars you know I'm five dollars a contract you know I'm, I'm that's not bad <laughs> to me 
but if I run the chance of 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 making you know two hundred dollars, that's two hundred to five. I'm done with that. I'll risk five for two. Uh, but I also sell to open on long time holding or long term holding uh, shares, and um, I don't I don't sell to open any naked options. Uh, TD Ameritrade won't approve me for naked options, but I don't think they approve anybody unless you're a bajillionaire or something. Other than that, welcome to the Sunday Night Podcast or Podcast Market Scan. Again, I'm Joe. And we're going to get started here pretty shortly. Uh, is everything visible? Can you see? Can you see the text on the right side on the the watch list here? Or do I need to make do I need to make this bigger? Or is it is it legible? All right, it's legible. Good. So we'll start at the big one, Apple. Apple has been getting absolutely destroyed. Um, they were flagging. It looked like they might try for 200 and they really, they really tried. Like they really absolutely tried to get to 200 and it just, it didn't happen. I'll turn on this watermark. So it's a little bit easier to see exactly what it is I'm looking at. Uh, it didn't make it. What's up, Kevin? Also, if you have any uh, tickers you want me to to check out, uh, throw them out there in the chat, and I will get to them at the end after I go through the the main list, and uh, we will see what we can see. Gotcha. So Apple, you know, um, really just getting decimated. It really has been. And it fell out of that flag and dropped. It ripped through the first order block and straight into the second order block. And this green gap right here, which is from the weekly. You can zoom in here. A quick uh, quick rundown. These are called trend bar gaps. It's where there's a large enough move in one bar that it creates a gap between the previous candle's high and the next candle's low. You see there's a gap there. Uh, this is exactly where we're we're dropping into. So we're dropping into this measuring gap here. And the, the second one in the series would be a measuring gap. Look up uh, uh, L. Brooks gap theory. Hello, Hemley. Hello, Hugh. I got Disney and uh, Plantaire on the list. The weekend uh, was good, actually. Um, it was a good weekend. We're nearing the end of... Uh, we're nearing the end of the winter break here for my kids. They'll be going back to school tomorrow. And that makes me happy. <laughs> uh, but also we've had two weeks. So all the sicknesses that have been running through the school system in my house have worked their way out thus far, which also makes me happy. So we're doing well. Thanks for asking. Appreciate it. Uh, so Apple tried to break that 200, didn't quite get there, dropped off pretty hard. And now we're in a really good spot where I personally would look at a long here on Apple. I would like, this would be a very good spot, in my opinion, for me, uh, to take a long, right at the middle of this block, where we um, where we bounced. Okay, so I'd be looking to take a long. And uh, I think... I think it's going to try again. I think we're going to try, and then we might even just double top. But this is a weekly chart, so we're looking at uh, we're looking at you know some probably some pricier contracts. But if we if I look down at a daily chart, more of a granular level here. And actually, hold on, let me switch back out to the weekly. And I am going to turn this visibility on to the day chart. So we can go to the day. We can see the trade. And I would look to possibly enter over Friday's high. Let's actually take a look at the weekly. That's all the way up there. 
So I would look for a price reversal on a lower time frame, starting with the weekly. All right, I've got uh, AMD and NVIDIA already on the list. I don't know what TSL is, but yeah, Lily and Spy will get to. Uh, so I would look for um, probably more of an entry over that high. It's going to reduce the risk reward to four and a half, but uh, it might be worth it to wait for the price reversal on the, uh, the daily. We'll switch down to the four hour and look at it here as well. That would make pretty good sense to me for a price reversal if it can get back over 182.75. Can maybe even say uh, 183 if it makes if it makes it a little bit more. Uh, uh, okay, so Tesla, that's fine. I got Tesla up there. I'll remove TLS TSL. Uh, time frame order blocks are valid for end of day trade. I prefer. Uh, longer, higher time frame uh, order blocks. So looking at the weekly and the daily, I specifically like the weekly. They tend to have more of a reaction. This order block right here was on the daily. This one right here came through and that's exactly where it bounced, flagged out and then ripped and tried to get up to 200. And now we're at this order block here from this last, from this, uh, Harmonic W right here. And that's where we're bouncing again. So I think it might try to go back up at least. I mean, at least first price target is going to be like somewhere in this order block right here. But I think it's going to try and go for um, at least a, at least 200, I think. And that's going to probably take a few, probably the first uh, rest of maybe the first two weeks. I'm going to say the first two weeks or so. They do have earnings coming up here in February, so just keep that an eye on that. We also have big earnings coming out on Friday. Uh, another season of earnings is starting with the banks. So look for volatility. We've got big news week plus earnings are coming up, and money is going to start positioning themselves uh, for the earnings on banks. So uh, we're going to see movement in the market this week. Yeah, I'll, some people do them differently. Uh, I I saw one guy on YouTube who would only do like the bottom wick if it was if it were coming back up. Some would do the top wick. Some will do the body. Some will do the whole candle. I really it's just personal preference. I like doing the whole candle because it gives me more of an area um, to work with. I guess. So Apple, I'm expecting a bounce if we can get a. Price reversal here on the daily chart above uh, 182.75. If it if it breaks below 179, I, I think it's probably just going to keep going. Like there's not, I mean, <clears throat> there's going to be some blood <laughs> in the water if that thing goes. And there's already, I'm expecting at least a bounce back into this order block. But uh, so I'm feeling some upside on Apple this week. <sighs> AMD looking at the chart here. So got a price reversal on the weekly. See how we came down, broke this low here. We'll look on the daily here. We just wicked it and then came back up, put in somewhat of a bearish candle here. Lots of imbalance up here. There's a gap here. Uh, you know, there's this gap here. Oh, no, that's not a gap. It's perfect. Perfect pricing. Uh, so we have imbalances, trend bars here. Order blocks and an order block here that's lining up with a gap. Um, so just looking at this, I feel like AMD is looking for some more down, some more downside just based on this chart. I mean, that's a pretty nice bounce. If it pushes up here, I might even look for a short heading into this gap. And then a possible return down to that weekly gap. Put my stop right over there. Let me take a fib here. I'm going to take a fib from this recent swing low to this high here. And uh, let's see, which one should I use? Which one should I use? PDA? 
No, it's not PDA. Quitters, no, 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 no. Uh, this one. Consequent C E. So we bounced right at the 50. How do I trade the imbalances? I look for rejections or support at those imbalances. So we got this this large imbalance here from the daily up here on AMD. Big gap between candles. I would look for a short into that because we're below it and we're coming up into it. I would expect it to reject. That's why I put my stop right on the other side of the of that imbalance because if it pushes through and can manage to hold it, then we're looking at resistance becoming support. Okay. So I just put my stop right over it and look for a continuation in the, the direction of the trend. Right now, this looks like a downtrend to me. We have a break in market structure. It's coming back up. We've got an imbalance up here. It would make sense if it tries to get up here and come back down. Um, so taking a Fib retrace from this recent swing low to the high here, it's bounced right at that 50 mark. Just bounced right at it. So if 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 we if it's gonna do what I think it's gonna do, I think it's gonna push into this imbalance and then reject and come back down. But technically, still we are it is bullish technically. So I'd be looking for it to push up. The smart thing to do would be to wait for it to come back below that 50 and then reject it and then continue down. But I think it's going to, because we got this imbalance up here, I think that's where it's going to reject and then come back down. So feeling like maybe the first couple of days here, maybe a pump on AMD up to 144 to 146 area. And then I'd be looking for a rejection. I'd be looking for um, like on a one hour chart, I'd be looking for, so we got the price came up, down. We're looking for it to like come up here, down, come up, chop. Give me like a market structure shift, reject, and then come down. That's really what, that would be most ideal to me. And then the market structure shift would be this one right here, pushing below this low, rejecting it, and then continuing down. That, that would be most ideal. Pushing into this gap, call it chop if you want, but I'd be looking for a market structure shift on like a one hour time frame, and then continuing down. Okay, so <clears throat> my entry on something like that could be my entry would be my personal entry would be right at the gap, right at the imbalance, the beginning of the imbalance on the daily chart here. <sighs> So this imbalance here from the daily chart, right here, right at that gap entrance. Here, I'll color this something else. It's a little bit easier to see. Ugh. So I would look to enter right at the gap, and I would use the the or the the imbalance, and I would use the imbalance as basically a, an area where I would be okay with it moving sideways. And I would put my stop you know, right over the, the imbalance there. Okay. So looking long for the first few days into AMD, and then I'd be looking for a push into this imbalance and then a market structure shift to the downside. Amazon, taking a look at Amazon, let's show out to the weekly. It pushed directly into that six month gap that I had been watching, pushed into the 50 that purple line is the halfway mark between that gap. And that's on a six month chart. If we zoom out. It's the gap between this candles wick low and this candles high creates that what's called a trend bar gap. Now we're looking for the retrace into it. And again, I'd be looking at like the short here, the, uh, Stop just over, and then the continuation to the downside. Let's. Uh, I'm going to take a look at a 60 minute, and we'll see. Actually, let's look at a four hour. So, this feels like it might actually come back up because we have to push up into this gap, the chop, sideways movement, 
A market structure shift to the downside here. And then the pushback down. It wouldn't surprise me if we came back up to retest this, but we did get a market structure shift to the downside. But, uh, let's take a fib. Again here, measure that. Be looking for a move at least to the 50% mark. Right now might be a little late to get into this trade. It's not really going to produce the risk reward that I personally would be looking for. That's a, a one and a half risk to reward. That's not that's not really my jam right there. I would maybe wait for it to come up closer uh, to this area and then look to take a short. Uh, but this may have moved without us or without me. Uh, let's see, I'm just taking another look here. So I think there's going to be a possible bounce there right around 142.8, which is where we're kind of bouncing right now. But this last swing low here, or this last little dip before we pushed up into the 156 or 155 and a half. And then we're pulling back. We're getting market structure shift on larger time frame. I would really like to see it push below that mark. But... Yeah, that definitely feels like it's going to be coming back down, but I feel like the Amazon trade was up here at the shift, the market structure shift up here. And I think that I think that train left without me, unfortunately. I haven't tried every strategy in the book, so I don't really know. I like to use order blocks and market structure when it comes to Kind of looking at a, a larger move, larger direction here. The market structure shift comes from, so we pushed into this six month gap, this orange box right here. We created a low, a little swing low here before we pushed up higher. When we came back down and broke, um, broke below there, that would be the shift in market structure. This candle closing below this previous low, right here is the market structure. January second, for the four hundred hour, the four hundred, the four hour. My goodness. Oh my gosh, I can't talk. Four o'clock in the morning <laughs> on the 2nd of January. So this candle breaking below and closing below this swing low is, in my opinion, the market structure shift to the downside. I mean, ideally, it would push back up and give a give a better entry and give an, a second chance entry. But at this point, the trade has already gone. So I honestly wouldn't trade Amazon right now. I would watch it to see if it continues down to this 50% mark at 136.77 and then possibly look for a bounce trade there. I'd look for more of a bounce trade here. Adjust my risk reward accordingly. Probably back up to this area. And then, so if it comes down here, I look for a bounce at the 50. Bounce back up, push down again, and then a continuation. That's what I would be looking at. This is what I feel is going to happen, but I feel the entry was up here. The entry was up here around 151 and a half. So now I would wait for it to come down to this 50 mark, which would be the halfway point between this swing low and this last push up to the high, and look for a bounce trade and then a rejection, and then a push back down for continuation. Uh, when I chart Disney, how would I scout Monday morning on a market open? What would be my levels for entry? And if not, why wouldn't you? Um, you know, when I get to Disney, I'll, I'll cover that a little bit more. I honestly wouldn't scalp Disney, but that's just me. I 
I feel like I personally like to scalp uh, Spy instead or the Qs. Not not really much for Disney, but the liquidity is better. The pricing is better. Uh, I can get in and out of a contract quickly. Uh, that's just my opinion. But I'll take a look at it when we get there. Boeing, Boeing, I think is probably going to have some uh, rough times ahead in the in the immediate in the immediate short term. Uh, it bounced at this previous uh, high here with previous resistance uh, becoming support. So we we paused, we pushed up, now we bounced. Uh, but with that plane and the fuselage flying out of it. Um, the markets tend to overreact when Boeing has an issue and they've been having issues with the 737 max for a while. And I think we're going to see uh, probably some downside. So under 243 is where I would look if it, it's probably going to gap down. We'll see how big of a gap down it gets, but I have a feeling we're going to, we're going to travel down into the 200 again. Yeah. I mean, and it's, it's not really a, necessarily about Boeing itself, but this, this last one was highly, it was highly publicized. It went viral. The video was everywhere. It hit all the major news outlets. Um, all right. I'll take a look at Disney. Uh, so the thing is, is I think the market's going to have an overreaction and if it dumps out, like if it, if it opens somewhere around like 222 or 223, I, I wouldn't take a trade on Boeing. I just, I wouldn't bother because at that point we'd be looking at a very high like probability of a bounce, but at the same time it's news driven. So I, not necessarily something I would want to trade because the statistics aren't on my side for a profitable trade because the news could drive it either way. And investors could say, you know what? We don't care. We think Boeing should be at 300. We're going to push it up. Or they could say, you know what, maybe they're not doing as well as we thought they were, and we'll dump it. So something like that, I watch it just to kind of see what the market's reaction to it is going to be, so I could like plug it away for future reference. Uh, but Boeing, because of that news and just kind of how volatile they have been in the past on news like that, is not something I would trade, especially with market news and PPI and CPI coming out this week. Um, I would personally stay away from Boeing especially if it gaps down a lot, at least like, you know, four or 5%. If it gaps down that much, I would, I would stay away. Coin coin is probably going to rip. Um, it's got this nice monthly gap that it just pushed through um, push out to the monthly here. And it just, it ripped right through this gap. No problem. Trend bar over a trend bar pushing up. And, uh, I think it's going to continue up and I think it's going to continue up on the news of the, the Bitcoin ETF. And if we switch out to the, was it the weekly there? Was it the daily? Where was it? Was it the monthly? There's the monthly. So this is something that I'm waiting to come up to this gap up here that it created in uh, January of 2022. I'm looking for price to come up here on on coin to look for a short down. Yeah, around 220 or right around 224 would be the entry for a short in my mind. Uh, as far as like short term. Yeah, so Friday was an inside day. On the weekly last week was actually a push down. I would look for a long over, come on now, 157.70 uh, for a trade up to 161. And then we're in, we're in some gap territory. This is also going to be one that's news driven though. And if we look at this on like a, a five minute chart. So basically over over Friday's high up to Thursday's high. 
would be the trade that I would look at. So many gaps here. Okay. Okay. Maybe set my stop here around 156. Get a nice risk reward. But that would be the trade I'd be looking at. Break over 157.70 up to 161. I mean, it's already got essentially a double top at that 161 area. Uh, it's pushing down here in the lower ends of this this move. But that's what I would be looking at uh, for an upside trend, for an upside trade. Downside trade probably offers better results. No, not really. So this would be the downside trade, a break of 151. To uh, for a move to 148 and then possible continuation to 144. But I think it's going to push up here into this gap around 163 first. And we'll see if they accept the, uh, the ETF or not. Meta seems to be doing uh, what I thought it was going to do the last time uh, I did this. So it's, it's held this level right here at uh, 343.09. And it's pushing back up. I would think Meta's going to probably try for 361 again. And uh, whether or not it double tops there or it pushes through is remains to be seen. But I think I think we could I think I could safely say that um, Meta's going to try to get back up to that previous high. And with a stop right below that area. Not the greatest risk risk to reward right now, so the trade may have may have already moved, but I'd be looking at that. I'm take for the four hour here. You maybe shore up a stop to right around three forty eight. That would give at least a two seven nine. I mean, still not the greatest, but it's there, you know. So I think Meta wants to continue up. And if Meta is going to continue up and uh, Apple is going to bounce, that could be enough to carry the market. Microsoft is in a big flag right now. Microsoft is something that I would definitely be watching this week. And uh, for that, that. Uh, definitely something to be watching on Microsoft right now this week okay so put this one on to your your watch list if you have the monitor room to dedicate a small area to it uh watch these trend lines and this would be a trend line trade watch for a breakout of those watch for a breakout to these previous highs or previous lows depending on which direction it breaks out the earnings coming up when is their earnings the end of January. They've been doing pretty well. So. Those would be the targets that I'd be watching. I, I really prefer like a three to one risk to reward. It's kind of like my default for all trades, but. um, I mean, I will be okay with like a two to one. Anything below a two to one, I'm most likely not going to take unless I can find a better stop on like a smaller time frame. But I really prefer three to ones instead. So put Microsoft on your watch list. Keep, uh, keep this one on your screen. Check it throughout the day. See how it's looking. Uh, in my opinion, I'm just going to say, in my opinion, technical setups like triangles, wedges, whatever, flags. They're literally, in my opinion, 50-50 every time. Uh, it's always better to wait for the break of the structure than to trade the anticipated break of the structure. So, unless you want to try for something uh, like a, a bounce at this trend line up to like um, the top trend line, you know, that could be, that could be a thing. 
and then hold it to see if it breaks out for more. Uh, but that that would be trading the range versus trading the breakout. So I guess that would be dependent upon how you want to trade. But I think that would be a pretty good risk to reward taking a trade if it comes back down toward this trend line. And just keep a keep a tight stop on that. Look for a close below that stop and then try to then trade it back up to the trend line wherever it, it gets back up there. The problem with trading ranges is that it all depends on like when like it could jump up there tomorrow and you get a five risk to reward. But if it takes a few days, you know, you're down to a four. And then three, and it just kind of dwindles down depending on where your entry is. But anyway, keep an eye on Microsoft. NVIDIA. NVIDIA is kind of all over the place. I really was expecting it to give more of a a nice, came out of this harmonic, got a nice cup and handle. Then it, it bear flagged, but I thought maybe uh, it would continue up and then it broke to the downside back into the handle. And now it's getting pumped back up. So I have to be bullish on NVIDIA right now. Like it, it feels like investors are not letting this go. Like they want, they want NVIDIA over 500. For a trade on a flag covering roughly two weeks, how much time do you personally like to buy? 60 days. The problem with, with options trading, waiting for something like that, is that theta is your worst enemy and it will eat your profits and it's annoying. <laughs> uh, I mean, shares would be nice to trade, but you know, obviously so not a lot of people have the money to trade meta microsoft or nvidia for shares you know so saying that uh you know just trade shares you just be a nice cop out but when it when it comes to options your your option could always go to zero there's nothing stopping your option going to zero so when it comes to swinging it i like to get enough time uh and if it's not within feasible like good pricing for the the portfolio um then i just i just don't take it but i would at least like 60 days on something that's going to be a few weeks because theta really starts to ramp up when you drop below 30 days to to uh expiration it gives me a little bit of wiggle room so i really feel like they want to push a video over 500 it really seems like that's where they're going with this so keep an eye on nvidia it is flagging here. If I go down to the one hour and see a nice little push up and then a flag wedge triangle, however you want to look at it. Um, so definitely I would be looking for a push back into 500, if not above. Roku. Roku is down here right around my stop. Actually technically hit my stop, but barely. It never closed. It's trying to build back up. So take a look at the weekly here. Hit that one month gap. Oof. Gaps everywhere. I'm sorry. I still like Roku Long. I still like this trade. I still like for a move back up to 108. So I'm feeling bullish on Roku this week. Tesla. Here's the thing I like about Tesla. If I look at the one hour. We broke over this long-term trend line, got a nice push up, came back down, and now we've got basically a falling wedge into the trend line. So I'd be I'd take a open up the one hour chart, draw a trend line here over these recent tops, and keep an eye on it and wait for it to break. If it breaks, I would target these previous highs to start. That would be the trade I'd be looking at. That would definitely be day trading. I'm not going to swing trade that at all, uh, especially on a news week. 
There's no way you'd find me tr- swing trading Tesla on a Newsweek ever. But I would look for a break of this trend or this wedge here, either to the upside or the downside. Keep an eye on that one. So Microsoft and Tesla, keep an eye on. Now to the indexes, SPY, right at that gap, that exhaustion gap here. I believe that is from the, the weekly, right? Yep. So we have a breakaway measuring exhaustion. Now we've got price trying to reverse. Couldn't quite get there. We did get the trend bar gap over this high. The push into all-time highs haven't reached the price target yet. So that makes me think they might want more here. So we might see a little bit of a pullback, but I would I would expect it to push into 480. Qs might get a bit more of a pullback here. We already pushed the target. We already reached the target for the same exact setup that was on SPY. The target was up here at 402. It pushed to 408, and now it's pulling back. So we might see a bit more of a pullback on tech. Uh, Sans the big names like Meta and Microsoft. <clears throat> uh, do I have a website to that I use to keep up with news on individuals? No, I don't. I don't really pay much attention to the news. Uh, no, <laughs> sorry. I wish I had a better answer for you, but um, Twitter, I guess, X, whatever you want to call it these days, um, would be my my best uh, suggestion. And for those uh, accounts on X, I'd really be looking at only a few, and that would be Unusual Whales, and uh, uh, who's the other one? Walter Bloomberg. Those would be the places where I would get my news. Uh, anything else is just noise, in my opinion. And news isn't, in my opinion, that big of a factor because the markets react before the news even hits the outlets. So the chart is going to be what gives you the setup before the news. So I'd be looking for more of a, a down move on some tech here. It did close below the 50% of this gap right here that it made. So just keep an eye on that. Small caps. What a nice setup here. We got the bounce coming out of this uh, this range movement. Got the push up. Now we're in a short to the downside. Let me delete this one. We already got that one. So now we're in a short to the downside. And I, I put my target for the short to this downside back here to these lows because it's pretty obviously ranged right now. We've got price reversing on the weekly, which means it's reversing on the daily. We've got volume going up on the weekly, sell volume going up. We've got gaps all over the place. And the market structure here is just saying that they're not ready to put money into small caps quite yet, I don't think. And uh, they really want to bring it back down. And uh, they're, they're waiting for something, in my opinion. Investors are waiting for something to happen or not happen when it comes to small caps. So trading IWM back to the downside, in my opinion. Diamonds ripping to new all-time highs. Like they are just going. The boomer stocks are ripping. I think Boeing might have a little bit um a little bit to do with this, maybe coming back down a bit, depending on how the market really reacts to these this Boeing news. Um, but at the very least, I'd be looking for a bounce around 370 and then continuation. Uh, boomer stocks tend to be going pretty crazy right now. And I was expecting a move to the downside here into this gap for some chop and it just straight bounced off and ripped to new all-time highs. So boomer stocks, maybe a little pullback, but I'm expecting it to continue up. Banks coming up. Goldman got the breakout of this wedge right up to this previous high, as was kind of expected. I'd be looking for a downside move now. It doesn't seem to want to get through there. That's two days that it hit that price target or that price and didn't come back down. So I would look for a pullback on Goldman Sachs. If you trade Goldman, probably very similar situation on um, Morgan here. 
really kind of looking for an upside here, but it can't get through that breakout or that, that trend line. This one's lagging behind. Goldman already made the move, pushed up to those highs, and can't get through. Morgan Stanley can't even get out of the wedge yet. So I'm going to go ahead and delete that, and I'd be looking for a short on Stanley. Put my stop like right there. I'd be looking for at least the bottom trend line there. Netflix really having trouble getting up to that 500 price again. It pushed up. This was a gap that uh, we'd been watching here Sunday nights for quite a while, waiting for price to come back up here because it rejected here uh, in July. And uh, I didn't think it was going to have enough gusto. They had to bring price all the way back down to 344 just to get it back up to 500. And then it can't get back up there. It can't even close above 500. So this gap is having definitely proving to be uh, some high resistance area. It got the push in, got the rejection at the 2021 lows. It had to come back, reload, push up again. Couldn't hold it, came back down, and now we're getting rejected. So on Netflix, this is something that I'd be watching. I'd be watching for a move to the downside below 471.80 to 466. I think that would be a really nice day trade. These drawings, man. So, looking for a short under here. And probably put my stop right around 474. And then look for it to really target 466. It's not the greatest risk to reward. And I could adjust my stop to get there. But I feel like Netflix wants to reverse here. I don't think it wants to go up anymore i think it's done trying to get up over 500 and investors have uh said that this is all it's worth uh, with the exception to zero dtes is there any benefit to buying more time on contracts when you're not swinging other than the fact that they deteriorate at a slower rate no um if you're going to trade zero dtes that's something that you would do or that i would do uh, if I'm expecting a move now, if I'm expecting a move, maybe by the end of the day, possibly next week, uh, you know, or maybe by the end of the day, um, I wouldn't get zero DTs. I'd get at least a few days if it's something like spy, but zero DTs would be a trade that I would be looking at. It's going to happen like within a few minutes. So to answer your question, with the exception of that, is there any benefit to buying more time of the contracts? Yes, because they'll deteriorate at a slower rate. So if the trade goes against you, you have a little bit more of a leeway to get out and save some money. All right. Starbucks. I think this thing's just going to continue down. It's got this gap to fill. Starbucks to at least 9180. Makes sense to me. If not, maybe taking out this low before trying to reverse. But I mean, I just, I know people like their Starbucks, but I think it's getting to a point where they just don't have the extra money anymore. So I'd be looking for some downside on Starbucks at least to 90, at least to fill this gap around 9180, possibly down to 90 and a half. Disney flagging here. I really expected it to come down a little bit more toward the February lows. So I'm still watching for that to happen. Uh, you could draw these trend lines here and wait for it to go. Um, but in all honesty, I think the better trade comes down to a retest of these February 2016 lows. And then that is where the the money bounce is going to be. So you, it's probably going to sit here and just range. And then once it gets to those 2017 low, or those 2016 lows, it's going to decide whether or not it wants to go back up or down. I mean, pretty simple. But I think those 2016 lows would be a good uh, 
a good spot to take along for a move back up to the hundreds. So I would wait. I would wait until around 86 and a quarter for a move up to 100. Oh, day trade setup for Disney. Inside day on Friday. Let's take a look at the weekly. Broke to the upside and closed above the previous week's uh, open. Feeling bullish to me. So I would look for a move uh, over. I mean, I'd really like for it to break that high for a move up to the right around 92 and a half. It's just my stop wherever. So we'll get a granular level, what that looks like down here. Um, all right, hold on. Okay. <laughs> So really, I'd be looking for a break over this high. 91.30 for a move up to 92.5. And, and you put my stop somewhere, maybe at this low right here. It did have a nice consolatory day on Friday. So you could watch for a break of this trend line, which it essentially did in after hours. So on something like this, I would look for maybe like a one hour order block. You got anything around here? There's a whole lot of chop here, maybe 15 minutes. And I think this would be a strong order block right here. And if price comes down to this order block, which it might, what, uh, what do futures look like right now? Oil is dying. Drop in, filling the gap. So we'll see. Uh, what that? So futures are are down right now. So you know you're looking at Disney right around maybe ninety, uh, ninety and a half, ninety point six. So if it gets down to this fifteen minute order block here, definitely look for a long. This would be the better trade, in my opinion. Definitely the better trade uh, for a risk-reward setup. And the reason being, I mean, you could take something right at the entry, but I think you might get a push into this, at least this order block right here. Possibly possibly this one, but I mean, that's an after-hours. It's an after-hours one, so... Actually... This looks to be the stronger block. Okay. So it's already bounced at this block once. This block right here from Thursday. Last down candle before this before we moved started moving up. So I mean if it manages to come down to here, I think that could even be like where my stop would be. Under there. Still a three to one risk reward. I think it might take off to 95, 92 and a half. So that would be that would be my my day trade right there. Um yes and no. Uh I, I originally was looking at this pre market order block here, but then when I looked to the left I saw one during market hours right at ten thirty. So it made more sense to use this one uh than this one. If that makes sense. Plantair still waiting for S&P inclusion. And in the meantime, is just dying off, filling this gap. Just dying, dying, dying. Got the break below, the rejection. And I would assume it's going to go back to 15. That's what I'm feeling like. 
gonna have to ask Zabes for my my two dollars on my single share of Plantair or Planetier, whatever. Uh, it might even want thirteen and three quarters, but I think it's definitely gonna try and fill this gap. I think fifteen might be the better spot for a long with a stop right below that fifty uh, for a run at these previous highs. But this is definitely one of those companies where I think you might be better off just buying shares and holding on to it. It's cheap enough. It's got enough money behind it. It's kind of range sitting up here in this area, which would make you know maybe even a better chance at a a, a long below fourteen or below fifteen, right around fourteen, might be the better chance for a long. But I'd be looking for a bounce on this, not a continuation to the downside. I'd wait for it to get there first before trying to chase it, if that makes sense. I'd wait for price to come down here and then take my entry versus trying to uh, you know, take puts and ride the puts down. So I'd be watching that right around 14 for a nice long. Comcast, I mean, I got to be honest, I don't trade Comcast very often, as you can see by all the drawings on this chart. Yeah, that feels very much like a break to the downside with a retest. I would assume this one was probably going to continue down. Were they looking to buy something? Does anybody know for Comcast? They're looking to buy something. There might be investors might be uh, dropping it off thinking they might be taking on too much or something. But I don't I don't keep up with the news on on these companies. But that definitely feels like a break to the downside with the retest. You know, uh, so how many rejections do order blocks offer on average until they aren't valid anymore? I, I mean, I don't know. That's not data that I really compile. I would say that if, if you're looking at like a 15 minute order block and you see the body of a candle, just go straight through it and close on the other end, like it's immediately invalid in my opinion. If you're watching the candle and you start seeing price movement off that order block, if there's if there's hits, if there's interest in that, then that seems to be a valid order block. But once it goes through and closes on the other side, that, in my opinion, invalidates the order block. I specifically like to look for action around the 50% mark. Tends to be a nice spot to look for uh, support on an order block, depending on how you draw your order block. Lily, Lily just keeps pushing up. It hit new all-time highs. Here's the thing, though. This looks very much like a liquidity grab. So it got the push over this October candle on the weekly, and then the push back down like immediately. It didn't quite get there. I would actually look to take a short on Lily. And I would look, man, where do we go? Where do we go from here? I would look for a short. Let's take a look at the daily. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Short. I would at least target this gap fill. I set my stop right at the close of this candle just for a decent risk reward. I'd be looking for this gap to fill here. Possibly a run at these lows, but this would be the first first trade I'd be looking for. See you, Hugh. All right, iPhone. Have a good night. <laughs> but Lily, I I mean, that that weekly chart right there, that weekly chart screams stop hunt and a move to the downside. Got a similar situation when it took out this high right here. So it took it out and then got a, got a move to the downside. But this is a much larger high. This is an all-time high that it got taken out and then moved back down. And didn't, it didn't close up there on a weekly. It didn't even close up there on a daily. And did it even close on like a 60? Nah, a one-hour chart didn't close. Boom, it just got knocked down pretty hard. In addition, you got 
this trend bar gap or fair value gap, as some would call it. Yep. It definitely feels like it, it wants it wants down. It wants downsies. <laughs> My daughter will say she wants uppies. I think this wants downies. <laughs> I'm a dork. My wife is cringe, cringing in the other room. All right. Last one, Baba. Baba, I feel, is just going to continue back down. I think this one's targeting these lows, in my opinion. I don't care what Toasty says. It uh, This gap right here, this green bar, this green box. Let's see, was that on the daily? Oh, my goodness. It was on the weekly. No, it wasn't. It was monthly. Come on now. No. I mean, I had it scouted for a reason, and it rejected twice there and is moving down. I suspect Baba's going down to 70. In my opinion, is an actual ticker symbol, Mike? <laughs> I'm hilarious. <laughs> All right. I'm priceless. I mean... Not quite. A, I mean, it's not a stop hunt at all. I'll never push those highs right up there. I'll get to unusual whales here in a minute, but yes. Uh, push to move up to the upside here as volume was dying, and now it's got this nice move up, but a big push down. I, this feels like it wants to come down a bit more. Uh, let's check the daily. I mean, this this candle right here. This candle right here from Thursday is one of the most bullish candles you can get. Okay, the, when you when you see a helmy, take care. When uh, when you talk candlesticks, right? Like this thing. This is a bearish. Sorry, not not a bullish. This is one of the bearish candlesticks, um, in the whole candlestick charting technical analysis world. But when you got an open with no push up, no wick to the upside, and then just straight down, very small wick to the downside there. You can see it, just a little bitty one. But, I mean, like, the most bearish candle would be uh, an open with no push up and then a push all the way down with no push down. Like, this is, like, <laughs> a very bearish candle, in my opinion. <laughs> So I feel like it's going to come down. It's probably going to target these lows here. Just based on that one candle, I think it might target those lows. Put my put a stop right over the Friday's high, targeting 56.2. Not the greatest risk to reward, but that's, that's what I think is going to happen. And that's it for requests. Anybody got any more requests? Oh, yeah, unusual whales. Um, bum, 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 bum. I don't know. Can you see? Can you see my browser? If I if I lay it over, can you see it? Do you see unusual whales or do you see a chart? You still see a chart? Yeah, okay. Um let's do how about now? You see unusual whales now? All right. So the CCJ 38 puts definitely piqued my interest right before it closed. Somebody loaded up the boat with right around 10,000 contracts right on the ask for around $66,000 going into this thing. Uh, uh, zooming out to um, options volume. It did give these puts are these is this last candle here, but somebody made some a, a call move. Not nearly as much, though, uh, as far as what I was looking at, but it is um, a candle premium of almost $800,000. So somebody may have an upside here, which um, they protected with the puts, but they, they definitely hammered these calls for 48. So CCJ, February, 48 calls. 
they were under a hundred on Friday. They're ninety two dollars a contract. They they got the majority of it leaning bid though. So that's why I'm a little skeptical on this one. So they put seven hundred twenty thousand dollars on the seventy two strike or on the seventy two. That's where they got filled on a really wide spread. So they could very easily be covered calls. But the fact that someone came in behind them and hit the ask at 92 makes me think that uh, maybe somebody knows something I don't know. In addition, this big block was not a floor trade. If it were a floor trade, I'd have a bit more um, leeway to it being covered calls. This could just be a really, really good fill. So CCJ, uh, 48 calls for February 16th is what uh, I'll be watching. And uh, the short here on uh, BYND, Beyond Meat, these five puts got hit on the bid. So if you're someone who, um, not, not that specific candle, back here on the second. If you're someone who likes to sell premium, uh, I picked up one of these myself. Um, and we'll see how it deteriorates. But based on their chart, I very much expect this thing to just die and this contract to expire worthless. So BYND five calls for May. CCJ 38 or was it 48 calls for February. And there's a few other ones. These this Bank of America March 15, 29 puts um, have a ridiculous amount of open interest. Um, not these ones, sorry. These June 21s have 200,000 open interest and the majority of it is long, which makes me think that there's some downside coming to banks. <sighs> and these real contracts for May 17th these are about 25 bucks a pop. Somebody got into them for $300,000 on the ask at 25. They've essentially been sitting there. They've been floating uh, anywhere from break even to up, you know, 40% to break even as the, the spread fluctuates. But for right now, uh, it definitely feels like somebody might know something. So they grabbed a stack of, of puts and the chart doesn't look the greatest. So, um, those are the contracts that I am watching. Now we'll flip back over to the charts here and we'll do APTV for uh, Medicar. I probably butchered that name. I apologize. No idea what this company does. What does this company do? Anybody? Manufacturing. Oh, yeah, model parts. Cool. All right. Well, let's take a look. Grab a fib. It's in a discount area. Um, pretty big sell volume there. What's a weekly look like? Monthly? Anything? You got anything for me here, chart? I'd be looking for a retry break of that 91.3 area. It broke above earlier, uh, but pulled back. But I would I would like to take a long trade there for a move back up to right around ninety nine. The risk reward is just not the greatest. I would move my stop to whatever seems. I mean, this is a monthly chart. I mean, if you're looking to get some shares, that's another story. Um, we're talking options. But if you're looking to get some shares, let's take a look here. Pretty 
pretty ranged what I'm seeing. This feels very bullish. This feels like a stop on right here. The push down on the monthly here into was that 71. And then the move back up. Now we're just kind of consolidating here. So it took out this previous low and then closed above it on the monthly. Got a nice push up here on the weekly. I don't think it would be a bad area to take some shares. You're basically at support. What's their options chain look like? Anybody know? Let me fire up Weeble, see what we can find. Um, I mean, their options chain doesn't look horrible. There's not a lot of open interest on their options chain. Um, but their premiums are relatively high for a 37% IV stock. So it might not be a bad one to get um, shares and then sell premium on. But the monthly here definitely looks bullish coming off the stop hunt. And I think it might want to at least try to uh, get back up to the top of this range that it's kind of stuck in right here. But that's my opinion. I think I might want to get back up there, maybe up into the 115, 116 area at the top of that range. Let's see. That tends to make more sense right around 113. All right. Anybody else got anything? Hugh sent me a message. Yeah, I'll send that out to you. All right. I've waited the standard seven seconds. You are welcome, Dollar. If there is nothing else, I hope you all have a good rest of your Sunday and have a good day on Monday. You're welcome too, pal, Kevin. And uh, you too, Mike. I hope you guys take care. Have a good night.